Interactive with X-Ray, where we bring trading experts to you live in the platform. Choose sessions, watch live market analysis, and catch up on your favorite market insights anytime. Ask questions and go one-to-one -one with leading experts on gold, oil, FX, crypto, indices, and equities. X-Ray, your very own analysis team, right at your fingertips. That's higher trading from MarketsX. Discover how some of the top executives are trading their own companies with our Insider Trades tool. See who's been buying or selling stock and what their trades say about insider sentiment. Use this unique big data tool to make more informed stock trades. That's higher trading from MarketsX. Boom, and we're live. What's happening, beautiful people? Happy Monday, everyone. How do you call a pig that does karate? A pork chop. Good morning, America. Good afternoon, Europe, and welcome, everyone, to our live stream. Let me know how you're doing in the comments box below, guys. And if you like what you see, like, share, subscribe, and support us in delivering more great content. It does help us a lot. Now, this being said, let's see what's happening in the markets today, 19th of April, 2021. And then we move on to chart analysis for the week. And I'm going to have a guest that's going to join us uh, shortly as well. So don't go anywhere. Headlines of the day and the weekly chart analysis coming up. Right, we have a start, uh, slow start of the week in the economic calendar, guys. We have a very quiet economic calendar for the day. However, the U.S. stock markets are seen opening lower today with investors very cautious ahead of the earnings report from Coca-Cola before the opening bell and IBM after the markets close. Tesla, guys, is under pressure uh, once again after a fatal crash in Texas over the weekend caused again by the self-driving software. The US dollar index collapsed today on the European trading session, eyeing the $91 uh, level to the downside and pushing gold futures up slightly. Crude oil was uh, steady on the European trading session today, trading around the $63 mark after the price got rejected by a resistance level at $64 on Friday. And Bitcoin tanked over $10,000 on Saturday, everyone, after Turkey banned cryptocurrencies in an effort to keep the economy under control. Currently, one Bitcoin is trading at $57,000. Weekly chart analysis and markets open coming up. Keep your finger on the market pulse with the news alerts tool. Stay up to date on the latest sentiment across all the major asset classes. Uncover bullish or bearish signals tied to specific assets that could be developing before major price moves. And track how news sentiment correlated with price in the past. Track the news volume on an asset, its fear index, and get a better feel for its underlying strength. All with news alerts, your central hub for market information. That's higher trading from MarketsX. Very good afternoon once again, everyone, and happy Monday. Let's start by uh, having a look at the uh, economic calendar and see what is uh, expected to happen on the economic calendar uh, this week, not only today. And then we're going to move on to the charts of the day, guys, and see how the major assets performed throughout last week. So as you see, the uh, economic calendar is very, very uh, shy uh, today. Nothing was really announced. Uh, we had the housing starts coming out a few uh, minutes ago from, uh, from Canada. It came out positive, but this was uh, basically the only news that we got from the economic calendar today. Tomorrow, it starts getting a bit uh, busier in the economic calendar, guys. We're going to have the um, uh, average, average hourly earnings uh, index plus bonuses, uh, 9 o'clock GMT plus 3 in the morning. Uh, coming from UK, we're going to have the claimant count ch change. Uh, we're going to have the employment change as well as the unemployment rate, okay, which is expected to uh, come out at 5.1% by consensus. So tomorrow morning, big, big, uh, big, big uh, morning, big, big opening okay, for the European markets. Also, in the same time, we're going to have the German uh, producer uh, price index 
Okay, and this is it uh, until 6.30, GMT plus 3 in the afternoon, where we're going to have um, the Kiwi dollar announcing, we're going to have uh, the Russian uh, ruble announcing, and we're going to see the API crude oil stock just before midnight. So tomorrow on the US side of things, guys, it's not getting very, very busy. On uh, Wednesday, there is a holiday in Brazil and uh, India as well. And we're going to have uh, quite a bit of uh, events uh, coming from the U.S. side of things, coming from Canada as well. Okay, so Wednesday is getting uh, quite busy. We're going to have a 9 o'clock GMT plus 3 uh, consumer price index on the pound. We're going to have the producer price index input. A couple of announcements from the uh, South African RAND. Okay, the core uh, CPI and the CPI uh, being announced at 11 o'clock GMT plus 3. Okay, and then in the afternoon, we're going to have a few announcements from Canada and uh, the crude oil inventories. Okay, followed by the cash and crude oil inventories and a press conference from Bank of Canada. So Wednesday gets uh, fairly busy in the economic calendar. On Thursday, again, we're going to have uh, quite a few uh, events. Uh, the euro will be in focus uh, in the morning up till uh, 3.30 GMT plus 3. Okay, we're going to have the uh, deposit facility rate, uh, ECB marginal lending facility and an ECB monetary policy statement. Okay, as well as the uh, ECB interest rate decision for April. Now, there's no uh, forecast on that one. The ECB and the Fed both uh, announced uh, very, very likely they're going to keep the interest rates uh, very low <clears throat> yeah, for uh, the months to come. Right, in the afternoon, yeah, we're going to have an ECB uh, press conference, the initial jobless claims, uh, the existing home sales okay, on the um, on the US dollar, as well as central bank reserves on the Russian ruble, if anyone is interested. Okay, by the way, America announced a lot of sanctions on, uh, on Russia due to the uh, <clears throat> so-called political prisoner okay, um, kept in, uh, in the U.S. prisons. Let's see what's going to happen uh, with that. The Russian uh, ruble is tumbling as we speak, has been tumbling uh, the entire week last week. Okay, so let's see where do we take it from there. Now, on Thursday, guys, we're going to get uh, quite busy during the day, surprisingly busy. Uh, we're going to have announcements from uh, from the UK coming out at 9 o'clock in the morning, GMT plus, uh, plus 3, followed by announcements in the Eurozone, announcements coming from France, Germany, okay, and more announcements at 11.30 GMT plus 3. We're going to have more announcements coming from the UK. In the afternoon, we're going to have the interest rate decision from uh, from Russia, which is expected to, uh, to increase to 475% from 4.5%. Uh, the uh, the previous one and then we're going to have quite a few announcements from the US side okay we're going to have the manufacturing pmi we're going to have the market composite pmi the services pmi and the new uh, home sales okay then uh, we close the week with the speculative net positions announced as uh, every other friday okay this is what's happening on the uh, economic calendar it is an interesting week. It is a very interesting week. Let's not forget the earnings season has just started last week guys with uh, three American banks giving the start, okay, and followed by other two or three on uh, Thursday and Friday, they all posted record numbers, okay? The American banks are doing well. We saw all the numbers coming out in green for the first uh, quarter. Now, let's see what's going to happen with the other companies that uh, basically form the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. Now, talking about the earnings season, let's have a quick look at the earnings calendar. We saw... Um, Coca-Cola was uh, expected to report today, and if we look at the earnings calendar, we can see Coca-Cola reported already. We see uh, earnings per share of um, 0 0.55 cents per, uh, per share versus an expectation of uh, 50 cents um, per share. We see in terms of revenue, a forecast of 8.63 billion, and the uh, actual came out at 9 billion flat. So Coca-Cola is doing very well from, uh, from what we see. Let's see what's going to happen at the U.S. markets open, which is in exactly 20 minutes from now. IBM uh, is also expected to report today after the markets close, guys. 168 expected uh, in terms of uh, earnings per share. And in terms of revenue, we're looking at $17.33 billion. Right. We had Harley Davidson uh, reporting $1.68 versus, uh, so basically double than what consensus was, uh, was predicted at uh, 0.89. And in terms of revenue, we're looking at $1.42 billion versus an expectation of only $1.26. Right, this is just uh, today, guys. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have big, big names uh, reporting. We're going to have Johnson & Johnson, guys. If you remember, Johnson & Johnson um, the first um, released the first vaccine a few months ago. Yeah, the first single-shot vaccine. And today, Greece was supposed to start vaccinating the population. Uh, luckily, that shipment was uh, stalled due to some blood clot uh, reports last week 
from uh, patients that got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. We're going to have Procter & Gamble uh, reporting as well. Netflix, Abbott uh, Laboratories, Philip Morris, Lockheed Martin, yeah, and other big names tomorrow. Uh, on Wednesday, guys, uh, we're going to have Verizon uh, reporting Crown uh, Castle, yeah, or, or CCI, Kinder Morgan once again, and Chipotle for the Mexican uh, food uh, lovers. We have Chipotle reporting in uh, on uh, on Wednesday. Now, moving on towards the end of the week, on Thursday, guys, we're going to have Intel, AT&T, um, Southwest Airlines reporting, okay, and of course, other big names. But I'm just focusing on the on the very important ones. And on Friday, guys, we're going to have the American Express, Kimberly Clark, uh, reporting. Regions Financial and Franklin Resources uh, reporting as well. So quite a busy week in the uh, in the economic calendar, in the earnings calendar. Sorry. Let's see what's going to happen next week, guys, since, uh, since we're here. We're going to start uh, the other week nice and early on Monday with Tesla reporting. Let's see what's going to happen, especially especially after the uh, latest uh, announcements with the fatality on uh, on uh, Texas uh, highways uh, on uh, Saturday. We're going to have Microsoft and Alphabet, uh, as well as uh, Visa and Eli Lilly, reporting on uh, on Tuesday, the following Tuesday, okay, with Starbucks and Amgen as well. It's getting very hot uh, towards the end of the month. Uh, let's see what else is, uh, is expected on, uh, Tuesday. Again, we're going to have a few big names reporting, uh, and on Wednesday, guys, we're going to have Apple, Facebook, T-Mobile, US, Qualcomm, Boeing, okay, CME Group, and, uh, GSK from, uh, from the UK. A lot of big names, Ford Motors as well, General Dynamics, Humana. Okay, so, uh, the following week, as well as eBay, the following week will be very, very busy in terms of, uh, of announcements. It's going to be the peak of the earnings season. Okay, and on Thursday, guys, we're going to have Amazon MasterCard reporting as well as McDonald's, okay, and Caterpillar, okay, and uh, Twitter as well. And we're going to end the week, guys, with uh, on Friday, April 30th, with ExxonMobil reporting Chevron uh, and AstraZeneca. Very, very important to see how AstraZeneca will do on the first quarter of 2021. So busy, busy uh, times in uh, in terms of uh, announcements, guys. Uh, even though the economic calendar takes a break time to time, the earnings calendar is where we have to look right now as it just started, then it's going to last for an entire month, okay? We're going to have over 1,000, 2,000 companies, US-listed uh, companies reporting. Now, let's have a quick look at uh, the charts, guys. Let's see the, um, the weekly performance as you got uh, used by now. And let's see how the major assets performed throughout the week last week. Okay, I'm going to start with crude oil WTI, uh, guys, on a 60-minute chart. I already took the liberty of drawing some support resistance levels. We see uh, 63.27, the current market price this afternoon. We see uh, crude oil started uh, the week last Monday down there at $58.73. Okay, and it didn't stop since. We saw a bit of a pullback starting after it got rejected uh, on uh, the 16th, yeah, on uh, Wednesday. After no, on Thursday, sorry, on Wednesday it was the crude oil inventories that uh, gave uh, crude oil the boost it needed to uh, to break this uh, resistance level to the upside and go all the way up to 63.86. From there we saw rejection. Okay, we see here what looks like a possible head and shoulders pattern, and when that happens, usually the price gets pushed a bit lower. Okay, so you might see a retest okay of that uh support level at 61 63 or somewhere there okay following the the structure of the markets we're looking at um an rsi that's very undecided this afternoon we can see the rsi trading at 52 percent between uh, overbought and oversold levels so the us markets open today will give us a better hint on where the markets will go moving on let's have a quick look at the euro guys which had a fabulous week last week it's currently trading at 120.30 versus the US dollar. We saw the performance. We saw the um, it had a, a quiet Monday, let's say, and on um, on Tuesday 13th, we saw it uh, pushing higher and it didn't stop since. As we look at the charts right now, we can see uh, the euro pulling back a bit and it's normal. Yeah, if you think about it, it done tremendously well on the European trading session as well as on the Asian trading session, guys, if you count the candlesticks. Now we see a bit of a pullback, yeah. So expect a retest, a potential retest to that 119.84, okay, where that uh, 50 uh, moving average is. Looking at the RSI at the bottom of the chart, we can see the RSI turning around as well from the uh, overbought levels, okay, indicating, okay, uh, possibly 
the start of a correction. So good week for the euro. It traded higher the entire week last week. Uh, now the question remains, are we going to see a correction up to the 100% level yet, yeah, which is somewhere there in that region? 122.39 is where the previous high uh, was, guys. Okay, if it continues like this, then very likely we're going to see that uh, happening. If it turns around, okay, from where it is right now, then very likely we're not going to see this uh, happening uh, this week. Now, in times like this, uh, most traders uh, prefer to use the Fibonacci retracement tool, yeah, which uh, gives you a good indication on where the asset might go. Yeah, so usually you measure from the highest high yeah, to the lowest low, and if you see the um, the candlestick formation uh, rejected somewhere here in the 32 okay or even the 50 percent level then you might want to go for a sell position if you see it uh, pushing higher and higher then you might want to go for a 100 percent correction okay in this case being the 122 39 mark but let's see it might take a couple of weeks till uh till we get there okay what's important for day traders is what's happening with the euro now Okay, now we see a bit of a pullback. Let's see what's happening once the US market's open. Probably you're going to see a bigger pullback, okay, somewhere around this level, yeah, where the, the 50 MA uh, indicates. Okay, and we take it from there. Okay, now moving on, moving on. Let's a quick uh, look at the cable, guys. 139.46 for the cable, which had a tremendous, tremendous um, uptrend uh, on the European markets today. Just like the euro, we see um, a red candlestick opening in the last hour or so, which indicates a bit of a pullback, but it's perfectly normal, guys. It's expected to happen after such an impressive rally that we see on the pound. The uh, Asian markets opened at uh, 138.18, uh, and we see the pound. Uh, we saw the pound pushing about an hour ago all the way up to 139.66. Whoever got this uh, trade right, kudos. Well done, guys. Now, again, looking at the RSI, we see the RSI turning around at the bottom of the chart, indicating a, a potential um, uh, profit taking, a bit of a meltdown in the markets. It's expected, nothing to be worried about. Now, USDJPY, on the other hand, was uh, tumbling the entire week last week. There we go. This is the performance of the US dollar for the, the week. Okay, And you can see it today, guys, as the markets open. Big, big uh, downtrend for a uh, big, big drop for the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. 108.22 as we speak, we see the RSI turn around from uh, the oversold levels, pushing higher. A correction is expected, yeah, but let's see what the US markets open will give us. Okay, expect a correction uh, up to that uh, 108.58 that we see, um, yeah, with the, the 50 moving average. Right, let's have a quick look at the Aussie dollar, guys, which just like the euro and the pound pushed higher the entire week last week. It started the week somewhere down there at 0.7595. It closed the week uh, at 0.7714, and we saw it pushing as high as 0.7788 during the, uh, the European trading session today. It started pulling back a bit as we get closer to the US markets open. 0.7765 right now with great potential to the downside. We see an RSI indicating uh downwards okay turning around from the um the overbought uh levels okay so keep an eye on this level guys if you see the candlesticks consolidating there and then the aussie dollar might get ready for another um another uh uptrend right usd cad let's see what's happening with the usd cad guys this is the performance he had throughout the week we saw big swings in the usd cad um like we got used to uh by now Okay, the highest last week was uh, 126.26. Okay, the lowest was uh, 124.71. Okay, and it's currently trading at 124.96. The RSI is uh, below the 50% uh, level, indicating a potential continuation of the downtrend. Okay, there is potential to the downside for the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar uh, based on uh, what technical analysis is showing us right now. We're going to look at some signals in a minute. We're going to see what's happening now. We had the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones uh, having two impressive weeks, guys, uh, with a, an impressive uptrend, closing the week last week at record levels once again. 4,185.47 for the S&P and um, 34,219.99 for the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, at closing on, uh, on Friday. The markets are expected to uh, open a bit lower today. Let's see if that's the case. 
Now, moving on, let's have a quick look at the US dollar index, guys, which measures the strength of the US dollar versus um, a basket of currencies, about six uh, major currencies. We're looking at the US dollar index trading uh, at uh, 91.16 this afternoon after it dropped the entire week. Last week, we saw an aggressive drop on the Asian trading session as well as the European trading session today. And as we get close to the US markets open, yeah, we see a very shy correction starting with the RSI only indicating 34 uh, percent um, retracement so far let's see what's going to happen from here but what do we know guys wow gold is tanking as well guys this is unbelievable what's happening gold has uh, moved up the entire week uh, last week uh, therefore the correlation with uh, with the us dollar index yeah negative correlation between uh, gold and the us dollar but we see gold tanking sharply a few minutes ahead of the us markets open uh, 1,767.30 were 55 this um, this afternoon. RSI pointing downwards, 37% downwards. Let's see. Let's see what's going to happen from here. And Brent oil futures, just like crude oil, 66.78 after an impressive performance last week. Yeah, shooting higher and higher on uh, Wednesday after the crude oil inventories. Now, let's uh, have a quick look at Tesla, guys, which uh, very likely will open to the downside today. $739.78 was the price at closing on Friday. Okay, with the uh, RSI summer at 54%, yeah, just between the um, overbought and oversold levels. Very curious to see what's going to happen with Tesla. Now, Bitcoin, guys, everyone's favorite. Let's see what's happening with Bitcoin, which is tanking as we speak. 56200 on the dot for Bitcoin this afternoon. After it uh, shed over ten thousand dollars over the weekend guys ten thousand dollars drop for bitcoin in the space of only a few hours okay falling from its highs at 64 500 all the way down to 53 207 okay so we're talking about a drop of ten thousand dollars ten thousand three hundred dollars drop for uh for bitcoin versus the us dollar guys 56 144 or 126 is the current market price. We saw a rejection of that um, 50 moving average. Okay, and the price keeps moving downwards. 43% uh, to the downside is where the RSI is indicating right now. There's still plenty of room to go to the downside for Bitcoin. Ethereum uh, had a similar trajectory, although not as aggressive at Bitcoins. Okay, it pulled back a bit um, after. A, a very nice and steady increase throughout the week. It started pulling back. It went all the way down to $2,035.44. As uh, we look at the charts right now, yeah, we see here the same rejection from that 50 moving average. Yeah, and the price is heading to the downside as we speak. 43% is what the RSI is indicating. So somewhere in between overbought and oversold levels. Okay, this is what's happening with the charts. This is uh, how the major assets moved uh, throughout the week last week. Okay, let's have a quick look at the um, European uh, markets uh, today, guys. Let's see how the CAC 40 moved uh, on the European trading session today. There we go. Yeah, we're looking at the the last few uh, few candlesticks. Yeah, the CAC 40 today had a good, good performance on the European trading session. We see the DAX trading lower. Okay, then um, it closed on uh, on Friday in Germany, and we're looking at the FTSE 100 as well trading lower on the European trading session today. Now. Let's take um, a 30 seconds break, guys, and then we're going to have Neil Wilson joining us from the heart of London. You remember Neil Wilson, right? Chief Market Analyst at uh, Marcus.com. Stay tuned. We're coming back live in 30 seconds with Neil Wilson. Discover how some of the top executives are trading their own companies with our insider trades tool. See who's been buying or selling stock and what their trades say about insider sentiment. Use this unique big data tool to make more informed stock trades. That's higher trading from MarketX. Right, good day once again, uh, beautiful people. As promised, um, this week is only getting hotter with Coca-Cola, IBM giving the start of the week. And tomorrow we're going to see Johnson & Johnson, Netflix, Philip Morris, as uh, just a few of the big names uh, reporting at the start of this lovely earning season. What to watch out uh, this week uh, will be discussed now with uh, Neil Wilson, Chief Market Analyst at Markets.com. Uh, Neil, 
It's been a while. How are you? Oh, Neil Wilson. Got Good afternoon, Neil. How are you? I'm very well. Yeah, good, thank you. How are you getting on? I'm good. I'm good. Fighting the markets, uh, looking to uh, to start a fight uh, with anyone as usual. Neil, can I can I broadcast this as a breaking news? Neil Wilson got a haircut after many months. UK reopened its uh, its uh, pubs. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, no, I was off last week, and it was uh, it was nice to get out and about, and the pubs were open again, and the uh, and the hairdressers and everything. So it's all getting back to normal now. You look very young now. <laughs> yeah, that's what the haircut does. Yeah. How is the situation? Well, tell me about it. I tried it and it, it didn't make me look young, to be honest. <laughs> How is the situation in the UK now uh, that there's no more lockdown, Neil? Are things getting back to normal? Yeah, by and large, yeah, it's, um, it's looking pretty positive here. Um, the, the numbers keep going in the right direction. The vaccines, uh, the vaccination numbers going in the right direction too. Um, and yeah, things get back to normal. So I think yeah, it's, it's all um, sort of to the script, if you like, uh, in terms of the UK reopening story uh, and what that means for, for the UK economy. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's, it's all going to plan. Fingers crossed and uh, kudos once again, because UK did a fantastic job, even though they had a slower start when the pandemic uh, started, now they recovered and they're doing uh, an outstanding job. Right. Earnings season. Last week, we had the start of the earnings season. We saw the U.S. banks reporting big, big numbers. The S&P and the Dow uh, reached record highs. What should we expect from the markets this week, Neil? Yeah, well, I think the focus is still on earnings, obviously, as, you, as you've uh, mentioned. You know, Coca-Cola numbers just out there, pretty solid. Um, uh, we've got, you know, I think it's 10 Dow components this week reporting in total 78 S&P 500 components. So a uh, pretty solid week for earnings. I think, you know, you're going to see, uh, I think you're going to see earnings beat expectations, even though the expectations have been uh, revised higher. I think on the whole, you know, the, the outlook is still very strong. You've had all this stimulus coming through from the U.S. now, from the U.S. government, sorry. Um, and that that's made a big difference. And and that's, you know, when well, we look at the, the, the banks, you know, their numbers, very solid on because they, they haven't had to set aside nearly as much for, for bad loans as they thought they were going to. And that's because of all the support, that the aggressive stimulus that we've had from the US. So uh, that's, that's positive. I think probably what maybe people are, are showing a bit of concern about maybe is, is things like loan growth and, you know, revenue growth. So earnings per share get, get, um, are easily manipulated and very easily inflated by um, being able to release a load of bad loan loss provisions. Um, but the revenue growth, the loan growth, uh, and that kind of thing is really what, what we're looking at. So um, on the whole, though, I think positive uh, earnings season uh, coming up. And we've also got the ECB this week. I think that's going to be uh, a pretty important one for them, uh, given the, the, the fact that Europe's just still struggling to really get out of the woods in terms of the pandemic. Big time. Uh, one thing that I'm very curious about is Johnson & Johnson, which will uh, report tomorrow. There we go. This is it. The, the first one on the list. And uh, considering what happened lately after the halt of the vaccine in the US and, uh, and EU due to blood clots cases reported, do you think this will affect their quarterly earnings? Neil? Um, no, I, well, I, I, wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought that it's going to have a material impact. I think we've seen it with the AstraZeneca situation. Maybe, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not fully versed in all the the blood clot data and so on. But my my expectation is that you know the J and J vaccine will still be used, um, and countries um, will still buy it. And so, I would think that that shouldn't long term have a material impact for J and J. I mean, obviously, you know, the headlines when there's a you know, another blood clot, one in a million blood clot, and they decide to stop using it and that kind of thing. That that obviously knocks confidence and knocks the shares. But I think um, on the whole, I've been looking at J&J &J looking pretty solid for, um, uh, in terms of its vaccine, you know, the number the numbers of, vac of vaccine uptake uh, going forward. Uh, for Johnson & Johnson, we see a forecast of uh, $2.33 a share, and we see a revenue forecast of $22.01 billion. Let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. I'm very, very curious. But as you said, it, we might we might have a pleasant surprise, let's say, and we might see the, the share price uh, shooting even higher. Now, where was I? Where'd you go? Oh, here you are. 
I, I thought I lost you. So overall, we're looking at uh, possible strong quarter uh, one earnings. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, across the board, yeah, I think you know, I think Q1 is going to be going to be good. I think um, Q2, Q3 going to be really good. Um, the comps, especially, going to look, look very very strong. So I think I think you're set up for a very strong earnings season. Uh, or earnings period over the next sort of three quarters, and um, I think that that is going to offer, um, you know, the, the support to, to valuations. I don't think necessarily you're going to see much, um, you know, multiple expansion um, going forward. I think the way interest rates are headed, they're probably going a bit higher. So I think multiple, you know, multiple compression is the order of the day, but earnings. The, the e bit of the EPS will, will be good, and so that will support um, the the e bit of the uh, PE multiple. So um, I think you know that, I think we're looking at a decent um, decent earnings growth that will support the market uh, for the rest of the year. So who is expected to do bad this season uh, so far, Neil? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> Airliners, yeah, airline companies. Yeah, airline company. I mean, but you know, we, we we know that they're doing bad. We know that things haven't been great for them, and it's not. There's no surprise. I think the surprise is is you know the, the surprises we're getting are going to be that that yeah okay airlines not doing very well. We know this. We know we can see the flight the data, the number of flights you get up to the minute data on the number of people that pass through the the airport terminals in the US and you know we know exactly how my, how many flights are happening what we don't know are what the earnings were like for um, some of the consumer discretionary consumer consumer cyclicals whatever um, you know what the the numbers were like for uh, John Deere or Caterpillar uh, those kind of companies and, and that's that's really where the the uncertainty lies you know for trading it and, and probably where there's more upside probably more more chance of an upside surprise than there is um than there is some downside right okay oh neil you got a fan okay christina uh says nice uh, haircut neil and is wishing <laughs> both great week so thank you christina thank for you. the kind words now we saw i saw a headline uh, today one of the headlines today was from the world health organization saying that the covid pandemic is worsening in some parts of the world but the outlook on the economic recovery remains high my question is how can the economic recovery look better as long as most countries still did not open the borders for tourism the ones of uh, of them that did are asking people to provide two pcr tests one uh, anti something test so basically you're gonna have to to go through a hospital before and after you go in the country now Germany announced a potential uh, lockdown once again. France is still struggling. Many, many European countries are struggling. How is this giving uh, a faster economic recovery outlook? What's your take on this one, Neil? Do you see things coming back to normal this year? Yeah, I think I think the thing is you, the vaccines will catch up um, in places like Europe probably by the end of the summer. Uh, I think Europe will be um, will have caught up, say the UK, the US, Israel. Um, and you know we've got a real drive, you know, engine of growth in in China, uh, really firing again. And I think um, you know the amount of stimulus that's in the system is still still obviously very very supportive. So yeah, and I saw a report today from Moody's noting that there's 5.4 trillion dollars in excess savings in in household excess savings, which is about equivalent to six percent of global GDP. So you don't need an awful lot of um, of uh, sort of pent up demand to be unleashed. That sort of people willing to spend some of that. You only need a little bit of that to be spent, and really you're you're flooding um, the system with with a lot of demand, a lot of consumer demand for um, for goods, services, um, and even travel. I think people find ways to travel. It might be a lot of domestic tourism. I think that's maybe overlooked is just how much um, you replace. Um, obviously, it's not very good for the airlines, but um, it's yeah. in terms of the overall economic benefit of it to, to, to each country. You replace um, uh, someone traveling from the UK to Spain with someone traveling from 
one part of the UK to another part of the UK. So you still get a lot of a lot of uh, dynam dynamic activity in, in travel and tourism uh, and hospitality. You just don't get the cross border, and that's 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 the one thing that's maybe going to be a little bit light. But you've got so much demand coming for other things that it, it's it's compensating for that. Because from what I know, the economic growth basically refers to China, yeah, United States, UK, and that's about it. South America is in big trouble. Brazil is in big trouble in terms of COVID and everything. Uh, India is struggling, and some parts of Asia are still uh, still struggling. Europe is still struggling. I don't see where the where the growth. If only US, China, and the UK count for economic growth, then yeah, I'm fine with it. But I see, it, I, I don't see it happening this year. Anyway, that's my take. Maybe I'm a hater. Maybe I don't know a lot. Now, the last question, Neil. Crude oil. Crude oil struggled for two weeks to break the $60 to the upside. Today, we see it trading at around uh, 63 62 per barrel. Do you have any indication on, uh, on crude oil for the week, Neil? Have a look at the charts. There we go. Yeah, I think now we've broken out of that range. You know, we're back into this this uh, range that it was at what was it, a month ago, or so um, above sixty three. We're sort of looking at that that towards the top of that area. I think um, I think you're seeing you know global stockpiles are being depleted, and, and I think um, you know you've, you've got uh, demand is coming back. Um, I, but I think the way that OPEC is marshalling this is quite. Um, it's quite clever. I think they're they're ha they're probably happy to keep oil where it is, roughly. You know, they're roughly in that sixty dollar range, um, because what they don't necessarily want is for a big big spike, uh, a real a real supply crunch to uh, generate a spike in prices above eighty, say towards eighty ninety, um, which which would just draw in a lot of the shale producers. I think that they're they're more happy with this. They're, I think on the whole, quite happy with this. I think mean, that's why we saw um, OPEC decide to um, to increase output again. They're confident yeah. in the global economic recovery, but also they don't want to um, to see prices balloon too much because that would simply encourage the U.S. shale output to get back online. And they're they're playing a, maybe a slightly longer game here, uh, and they want to they want to get to a point where um, where U.S. shale is no longer uh, the problem that it, that it has been in the past for them. You mentioned a second ago the the balloon price, and I didn't want to do it because I know you're not a big fan, but I can't help myself. Talking about the balloon price, have a look at this. Bitcoin, $56,563. 10K drop in a few hours on Saturday after the announcement that Turkey banned cryptocurrencies. How is that for a bubble? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very nice. 15% drop in a few hours. It says it's not... Um... It's not a, a good store of value, I would say. And going technical on it, in case technical analysis makes any sense on uh, on cryptocurrencies, yeah, we saw a very shy correction. We saw a, a bounce from that 50 moving average, okay? And now the market is, um, is going sideways. I don't know, but uh, I think, at least from my point of view, it was inflated a bit too fast, too, too much, and without anything you know solid behind it so yeah tesla announced you can purchase tesla in bitcoin so what it didn't i mean it didn't do any any good to the world but anyway uh, i mean did we run out of uh, fiat currency <laughs> no, I think we've got enough of that. were people queuing up to buy a tesla that by the way on on saturday um their autonomous driving system killed the man killed the person in uh, in texas so were people queuing up to buy that and they couldn't pay with fiat anymore and they had to come up with this uh new uh, way of payment i don't know only time will tell right neil thank you so much for being with us today it's been great catching up i kind of missed you for the last two weeks <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been good it's been good we'll um we'll catch up again on thursday i guess let's try and catch up again on a thursday uh, thank you so much for today neil cheers uh, right, ladies and gentlemen, traders, we had Neil Wilson with us from the heart of London. Great uh, guy, great personality, chief market analyst at uh, markets.com. A lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge. So let's have a quick look and see how the US markets open uh, this afternoon, guys. But please allow me a few seconds to get my headset off. 
discover how some of the top executives are trading their own companies with our insider trades tool. See who's been buying or selling stock and what their trades say about insider sentiment. Use this unique big data tool to make more informed stock trades. That's higher trading from MarketX. Right, lovely people. Let's have a quick look at uh, crude oil WTI and the opening after the US Open uh, 11 minutes ago. 63.60 for crude oil WTI. We saw a positive opening um, at, the, um, at the US Open. Let's have a quick look at the Euro, see if anything happened. Nothing really happened yet. Okay, we saw the Euro opening to the downside, probably aiming for that 50 uh, moving average. Okay, around the 120 level flat. Okay, for the correction, which again is normal. It's expected to happen. We see the pound pushing even higher, guys. 139.63 and the pound is pushing higher um since the u.s markets opened uh, 12 minutes ago usdjpy we see a negative opening for the um the u.s dollar uh, versus the japanese yen pushing uh, pushing a bit lower nothing is happening with the aussie dollar usd cat got a bit of a boost to the upside probably trying again a correction of sorts uh, let's have a quick look at the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. There we go, guys. We see the S&P opening lower today, 4,177.30 and dropping. Okay, we see that retest. Let's see if uh, the price uh, action will stop here or it's going to go even lower. Okay, probably um, covering this gap that was uh, was left in the markets last, uh, last week. There's still a gap in the markets, guys. Usually gaps will be filled uh, sooner or later. Right, and now we're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which plunged at the opening 3408223 for the Dow Jones Industrial Average this afternoon. We see that retest of that 50 MA. Again, the question remains, is it going to continue Yeah, all the way down to the 200 moving average once again to fill in the gap that uh, had uh, left uh, two weeks ago, or is it going to continue to the upside? Okay, quick look at the Bitcoin, guys. Let's see what's happening with Bitcoin uh right nice and steady we see a bit of a correction uh, bitcoin is uh aiming a bit higher right now 56642 but the price is still subdued by that 200 moving average okay that you see there in the right hand side nothing significant on ethereum as well we see the price um testing three times in a row that 200 moving average the fourth time it traded lower and now we see the the price action heading towards that 50 ma Okay, uh, at $2,232. Yes, so we might see another rejection from um, from that 50 or the 200 moving average to the downside. Only time will tell. But what I can tell you for sure is that uh, volatility is the keyword today. Right. This is it from my side today, guys. Um, join me again tomorrow for a great round of market talks. We're going to see who reports tomorrow, what's expected to happen, and most importantly, what happened today. Until then. Remember to trade responsibly and may all your trades be in the money. Happy Monday, everyone.